If anyone who knows how to creatively combine art and mass communication, it's a graphic designer. Whether you are branding your company, marketing your product, or growing your network, you definitely need a graphic designer. However, to combine art and technology, graphic designers rely on design software along with computers to create distinctive graphics and print designs for various companies and clients. The primary applications are Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. But do you know that each application is made to serve its own purpose? In this video, I will teach you the differences between Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. By the way, if you are new to this channel, then please subscribe to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, then welcome back to my channel. Before I jump to the differences, you need to know about raster and vector. I am sure you have heard about these words in your life. But do you know what they really mean? I made a separate tutorial for that. Link is provided in the description. Similarities between Photoshop and Illustrator Both are Adobe Creative Suite products and have similar user interface. Both of them use layers to separate elements from each other. Both of them have similar tools such as Pen Tool, Selection Tool, Shape Tools, Eyedropper Tool, Gradient Tool, Magic Wand Tool, Brush Tool, Puppet Warp Tool, Eraser Tool, Slice Tool, and Type Tool. Differences between Photoshop and Illustrator Despite having tools of similar capabilities, they behave differently in Photoshop and Illustrator. For example, the most famous pen tool. In a pixel based Photoshop, the pen tool behaves like Illustrator pen tool. But once the tool is dropped, the result is simply pixels on a layer that can be modified with image editing tools. Let's draw the octagon in Photoshop using the pen tool. Shortcut key is P. Close the Bezier path, then right click on the path and choose Make Selection. After it is selected, make a new layer by clicking on this icon over here or press Ctrl Shift N. Then fill the shape with green color. We have made an object on the canvas. In a vector based illustrator, Whatever you draw with pen tool is transformed into a path that contains the anchor point. Let's draw the octagon in Illustrator using the pen tool. Shortcut key is P. Close the Bezier path. Now, you don't need to right click on it to make a selection. It is already a vector object. Let's give it a green color. We have made an object on the artboard. Let's compare both shapes. In Photoshop, the shape doesn't have anchor points. Even if I use the Distort tool, it will only stretch the anchor points of bounding box. In Illustrator, the shape has anchor points. Using the Direct Selection tool, anchor points can be dragged all around the artboard. Another notable difference between Photoshop and Illustrator is the resolution. Photoshop is resolution dependent, which means everything in Photoshop is pixel based. So, resizing the objects will only cause distortion or pixelation. Hence, the graphics are non scalable. Enlarging the image will only compromise the print quality. Illustrator uses a computer algorithm to create a line by connecting two dots. Lines will stay firm regardless of size and images can be printed in high resolution. This vector software is independent of resolution. So whatever graphics you create, they are scalable and can be printed in high resolution. When we talk about the logo design, the first thing that comes in our mind is delivering the message of the logo. You can use Photoshop or Illustrator to make a logo. 
However, Photoshop cannot manipulate the logos the same way the Illustrator does. To design a logo in Photoshop, first thing first, you need to create a layer. Then, from the shape tool, I am taking the ellipse tool. The shortcut key is U. Holding shift key, I am drawing the circle on this canvas. Shift key will maintain the aspect ratio of this shape. Fill it with the red color by pressing Ctrl Delete. Now, to add or subtract the other shapes on it, you need to make the selection of the shape by holding Ctrl and clicking on the layer. Once selected, you need to go to Select, then Modify. You will have these five options. And I am going to focus on Contract for a while. Let's give it 10 pixels. Notice that the selection had been contracted by 10 pixels. Now, to subtract the part, I simply need to hit the delete button. Photoshop will show you the error saying that the shape is not editable. To make it editable, you need to first rasterize it. After rasterizing it, press delete. You had just created a new shape. I'm going to duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J. I'm going to place these shapes on opposite sides, leaving the intersection point. Now, let's Ctrl click on the thumbnail of top layer. Let's go to Select, Modify, then Expand. Choose 10 pixels. Click that bottom layer and press delete. Congratulations, you had made your logo. Now, let's design the same thing in Adobe Illustrator. Let's draw the circle on the artboard. First, take the ellipse tool, the shortcut key is L. Give it a red color. To add or subtract the shapes, first you need to offset it. To do that, Go to Object, Path and Offset Path. Assign it minus 10 pixels. This will work like a contract tool in Photoshop. And enter. Notice that the shape has been contracted by 10 pixels. Select both of them and go to Pathfinder. Shortcut key is Ctrl Shift F9. And choose Subtract. You had just created a new shape. Now make a copy of it by holding the Alt key and drag it to the opposite side. Select the other shape and go to Offset Path and assign 10 pixels. It will work like Expand Tool in Photoshop. Now select the large shape and subtract with the other shape. Congratulations! You had made your logo. Now see the difference. Let's zoom in 800% in Photoshop. You see these jagged edges, thus degrading the quality. Now, zoom in 800% in Adobe Illustrator. You see the edges are incredibly sharp. That's why use Illustrator for designing logos. I repeat, Adobe Illustrator. One of the least differences between them is the crop tool. Import any image in Photoshop. You can crop out the images very easily by simply deleting the pixels. However, we cannot crop out the images in Adobe Illustrator. Alternatively, you can use clipping mask effect for that purpose. Import the same photo in Adobe Illustrator. Now, I don't like this part of the photo. So, I will simply draw a rectangle on the photo excluding that part. Select both of them, right click and choose Make Clipping Mask. It looks like it has been cropped. But when you double click on it, you will be able to modify the position of the image under the mask. You can also do the masking in Photoshop. To do that, Place the shape layer below the image layer, then right click on the image layer and choose Create Clipping Mask. Now, wherever you will move the mask, the image will follow the mask. Last but not the least, 
most new users get confused on this control part of the toolbar. In Photoshop, the front color is the foreground color and the one at the back is background color. In Illustrator and in Design, the front control is the fill and the back control is the stroke. Similarities between Illustrator and InDesign Adobe Illustrator and Adobe InDesign both are Adobe Suite products and share same interface. Both of them are vector-based software. Both of them share the same tools such as Selection Tool, Direct Selection Tool, Scissor Tool, Shape Tool, Gradient Tool, Pen Tool, Pencil Tool, Smooth Tool, and eyedropper tool. Both of them produce high quality graphics no matter how much you zoom in. However, there aren't many shapes in InDesign as compared to Illustrator. Differences between Illustrator and InDesign Although both of them are vector based software, both have the multiple page capability but InDesign has a master page functionality that allows the users to edit multiple pages in one go. Whether it's a cover page, page number or table of contents, InDesign will automatically organize everything for you. The main difference between them is that the Illustrator has artboard whereas InDesign has pages or spreads. You can have many pages in InDesign but having many artboards in Illustrator disorganizes the content. The document becomes so large that saving your work will take more than 10 minutes. There is no such problem in Adobe InDesign as it is capable of handling multi-page documents. Master page is one of the main unique features in Adobe InDesign that lets you create different templates to be applied on preferred choice of pages. Adobe InDesign is perfect program that uses master pages to apply templates on pages throughout the document. However, Illustrator does not have the templates that are used for large documents. Also, it lacks the automatic page numbering ability. Let's say you had created 15 artboards for your document. You added a new artboard, then you need to manually add the page numbers on every single artboard. Through Adobe InDesign, we can do automatic page numbering and even change the page numbering format to be applied to entire document with a single click. If you want to learn more about master pages, I have provided the link in the description. Also, there is no table of content feature in Illustrator. Therefore, it would be a waste of time creating contents list manually. Never ever use Illustrator for table of contents and word formatting. Always use Adobe InDesign. I repeat, it's Adobe InDesign. Overall, Adobe Illustrator is still best for creating depth perception and comprehensive drawings by means of multiple layers. Whereas, InDesign handles a large number of pages and gives you control over the design and content. What should you be using? If you want to edit the photos or pixel editing like background removal, mockup, image color correction, camera raw filters, then you need Photoshop. If you want to design print materials like drawings, flyers, cartoons, icons, logos, newsletters, product packaging and others, then you need Illustrator. If you want to print a booklet, brochures, long documents, magazines and any other multiple page document then you need InDesign. The front cover page, back cover page and all the pages in between would be created using InDesign. What sets InDesign apart from Photoshop and Illustrator is it focuses on the quality of text and typography. If Photoshop and Illustrator are books then InDesign is a library. Summary When it comes to choosing between Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign, it's entirely your choice. 
you can pick what suits you the best. For instance, you might find Photoshop easier to learn than other applications. But creating brochures, cartoons, and logos in Photoshop is absolutely waste of time. Similarly, Illustrator is a safer bet when it comes to scalable graphics, but you lose the creative filters that Photoshop offers. And finally, using Illustrator for long documents is also a waste of time, as InDesign could do it more productively. The great thing about InDesign is its ability to combine artwork from Photoshop and Illustrator to create multiple page spreads and layout. Overall, these applications are designed to work together. Knowing how and when to use these applications will let you make visually appealing graphics that you could be proud of. I hope this tutorial gave you useful information regarding differences between Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign that will help you in your future project. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section below. I would be glad to reply you. Your feedback will be much appreciated. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Also, the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any of my new tutorials. Thank you for watching Javasimra Productions. See you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.